Hello, I'm Lydia and you're listening to Lens from the Fens. Hello everybody, welcome to a live uh, introduction for Lens from the Fens. So you can probably hear a bit of traffic behind me and that is because on my mini walk, talk and shoot I am across the road from my workplace which is near Aundel. So over the main road from my workplace is part of the river Nen or Neen I think it's Nen and I've just brought my camera with me today because as I hope most of you have been experiencing there's been a glorious spring weather there's a few clouds in the sky but there isn't much of wind so it's actually quite pleasant so if you don't already know my main or full-time occupation is as a product photographer so that's what happened when I graduated with my foundation degree in creative and editorial photography and I've just been working in product industry since then which I'm really grateful for because I've managed to use what I've studied both within work and also outside of it so my wildlife photography is very much my hobby outside of what I do for a living. So yeah, I thought I'd just do the whole episode while I'm out and about rather than taking it back into or back into my office, editing it there, adding some stuff. So just off the top of my head, a couple of the recent news that I've had near me. Um, a white-tailed eagle was spotted at my local nature reserve, which is deep in lakes. And it roosted there. Well, it, it stopped off there for a break for about three hours last Sunday morning, I believe. Um, obviously, I didn't see it. But um, it's one of the white-tailed eagles that was released as part of the Roy Dennis Foundation, where white-tailed eagles were bred and then released from the Isle of Wight. And uh, yeah, they've been venturing all over the country. And more recently, this one, I think the name of this one was G471, I believe. If not, or if I am wrong, you're more than welcome to check out the website for the Roy Dennis Foundation. And it will, it will basically show you the route that it's taken, as well as all the other individuals that were released there. So yeah, it was a little bit gutting that I didn't see it, but... I think it's really nice that it's actually, it's actually venturing to different counties across the UK. So I've just approached the river then now. There's, uh, there's people with dogs. So uh, I don't think I'll be going up that way where they're going. Because I might slightly disturb the wildlife. But... A lot of the trees are still quite bare at the minute. Nothing's really coming up green. And it looks like there's been a bit of clearing going on as well. So I don't know whether there's some rotten trees that are being taken down or a disease. So yeah, only the really green stuff around is the reeds on the edge of the river and then the green grass which covers a field up to the main road but I've been here I've been coming to this part of the river a couple of times since I started work or since I started this job which was back in December 2019 and it is a really nice setting it's hard to think that you're right next to a main busy road I can see the church in Aundel from here I can obviously see my work building. So yeah, over the other side of that, it's just all very 
natural, there's like old style villages. So yeah, it's just a really, a really pleasant place to walk along. So I'm not gonna walk too far, I think, because I have got my long lens with me. So I'm gonna venture up a bit, maybe to this bend and uh, we'll just sit down for a bit and see what comes along. There's a lot of really good perches for kingfisher and I think one of my colleagues mentioned that he saw a kingfisher not so long ago along here so there's always that chance. I'm just looking where to sit because if I carry on any further you're going to hear more of the the traffic which I don't really want but hopefully you can still hear some of the birds on this side there's a moorhen out on the water I heard my first chiff chaff this morning which was really really nice a sort of a, a sign that spring is here I'm just going to walk back up towards the bridge slightly. Again, because there's people with dogs up there, there's obviously not really going to be a space or a quiet area for wildlife to come. So I think I'm going to pitch up near the bridge, which crosses over the river then to a, a neighbouring village. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. And I've only walked in there once before. And it's just a very old, nice village, really. There's fields that you cross through to get to the main centre of the village. Right. I'm going to set up shop here, I think. Looks very nice. Ground's a little bit wet, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Obviously, because I'm working today, I'm not <laughs> in uh, I'm not in my usual practical gear. I'm in workwear, so the only really suitable thing I've got on is my Doc Martens. So at least I've got a bit of. Oh, there's some swans flying over. Hope you heard that. Two mute swans just flew over. It's not too wet, but I have a feeling that my, uh, my jacket's going to get a little wet patch. But, yeah, because my back is to the traffic hopefully you can hear me better than what's going along the road but I'm just looking across the river now you can probably hear the great tits on the opposite side I think there's a red kite overhead as well. So as a lot of you will know now, the stay at home rule has been lifted from the 29th of March. I'm, re I'm recording this on the 30th, so the day after it was announced. And yeah, everyone just seems to be taking advantage of going out for walks and 
meeting loved ones, socially distanced of course. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to meeting my parents in their back garden, meeting my nephews again, and also just to be able to obviously not travel too far because you're only you're still only allowed to stay local. You can't really do lots of journeys to lots of different places, but I think by the time the summer comes, they're more likely to be relax a bit more so there's definitely a few places I want to travel up or down to for my wildlife photography so yeah it's uh, I'm feeling really optimistic about it and I feel like I can get my say my mojo back into uh, the wildlife photography side again obviously doing the podcast has been really fun because I can talk rather than just show my work, talk about what I'm seeing and and any new stories, so that's been really nice. But I think just having the chance to actually go out to places with my camera again. It is really nice. I'm not actually sure if this area of the men is good for otters. I think because they're actually quite widespread or they cover quite a lot of England and further up north, there's a good chance you'll see them pretty much anywhere there's a river because they're around all year. They don't go into hibernation. So there's definitely a chance that they could be here. Sounds like a wren, more hen. I hope you can hear the chiff chaff. It's just a really nice springtime sound. And that obviously means that our summer migrants will be arriving soon as well. I think I would have mentioned that in my episode before, talking about the signs of spring. So that's the swallows, the swifts, house martins, sand martins, cuckoos, turtle doves. There was a cuckoo here actually last summer when I was out for lunch. So if they've laid an egg here and they obviously don't rear their own young but if one definitely laid an egg then they could always come back so I'm obviously on a limited time but I just thought it'd be nice to do a whole episode where I'm just sitting outdoors with my camera oh there's the red kite flying way up above my head And when things become a bit more certain about where I can go and what I can do, then I'll I'll definitely be able to plan better. I literally came out today, took my camera into work, just because I don't know whether the, just because I know the weather is going to be good. So I keep reverting back to not planning where I should go, but I think just it's just an excuse to get outdoors today. Like I said, it's it's very spring-like. The sun is out. It's a little bit overcast. There's a bit, a few white clouds here and there. 
but when you're just sitting in it and there's no wind coming through it's really nice there's multiple raptors now it looks like there's two buzzards with that red kite flying overhead crow just flew over too two red kites now I see them from my work window as well because they often fly low over the roads and the neighbouring fields if there's any uh, roadkill or any scraps they can get near the main road. So it's a bit dangerous for them really but to see them come in so low in front of the building is really nice to see. bit more news for you that I thought of at the moment. Um, we have now, or me and my fiance have now counted up to five hedgehogs in our garden. So they'll definitely be the ones from last year, I reckon. I've just seen a wren, sorry. Um, so yeah, up to five hedgehogs have come into the garden now looking for food, which is good. It means that they're obviously safe where they are a living and they're finding a good source of food from what we put out and if they find anything en route. There's been the goldfinches still in the garden, there's been goldfinches at work now. It's weird how they all come out at once, it seems to be something I notice when it comes to springtime. And we've also had house sparrows and blue tits check out the two nest boxes that we have on our fence posts in the garden which is good as well oh and also um, I posted it last week but my overall downloads for my podcast through the website that I host it on has reached over 1000 downloads so again I want to say thank you so much for listening in whether you just listened to one episode or you've been here from the beginning or from the middle, it's just really nice to know that people are able to listen to what I talk about when I go out on my walk and talks, stories of the fens. It's been really nice to share it with you all and I'd really like to think that it can continue for as long as possible. So yeah, thank you very much again for tuning in and by all means you can share around with family and friends if you like or share through my Facebook page or my Instagram page but yeah it was, it was a nice nice sight to see last week so it makes all the work and developing of this podcast worthwhile because it is I am doing it all on my own I saw some music on my own I did have a bit of help from some other podcasters about setting it up but pretty much the whole recording the editing the publishing it's all it's all me so it does make all that work worthwhile in the end I think it's nice to get in a bit of soundscape for you as well. Because as I'm improvising what I'm saying, there's a lot of gaps in between, rather than when I'm reading notes out of a notebook, because that's what I usually do when I'm introducing the episode, really. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll appreciate the soundscape as well. I don't think I'll be able to see the the chiff chaff visibly. I can definitely hear it. It's a very uh, recognisable sound because it matches the name of the bird. So the chiff 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 chiff. 
which is, comes in quite handy. Same with the cuckoo. I am also planning to be going back to volunteering at Frampton Marsh in the next couple of weeks, going into April. So it'd be nice to do a sort of updated walk and talk while I'm there. It's been quite a good few sightings already going into March. So there's been things like little ringed plovers. I think they sighted one of the first martins of the year there and they're also uh, setting up a site for spoonbills and egrets to potentially nest on um, so they got some <laughs> uh, decoys out on an island in the middle of one of the main lake reserves so that will hopefully entice either spoonbills or even great white egrets to nest there this year and that'll be really good that'll be good to get some pictures of definitely um so yeah it's gonna be really nice to go back there again it was christmas time i last went and volunteered but now that the warmer weather's coming and there's there'll be a lot more birds arriving and obviously nesting happening because when the first lockdown happened things like lapwings were actually nesting on paths because obviously no one was using them so there was actually a little boom of lapwings i'm just going to try and get these red kites are they going away now there was a pair of them but it went back went back the other way so Some grey lad geese flying over. Oh, that was cool to hear them fly. Hear the wings beat against their wings and feathers. So I've been out here for about half an hour now and I'm debating whether or not I want to walk a bit. I think what I'll do is I'll cross the bridge and that'll take me into more of a wooded patch. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Get some feeling back in my legs. <laughs> There's no wet patch on my on my uh, coat, which is good. <laughs> yeah, I think because the sun's only just hitting the ground, it hasn't fully dried it off yet. But I'm gonna cross over the bridge, which is part of Nen Way or Nen Way. steps going up the bridge. Crossing over it now. I think another activity I'm looking forward to now is um, that of open water swimming. So I've only been doing it for a couple of years really. I think it started in 2019. It's going down the steps. And um, yeah, I took part in a four kilometre race at a local lake, trained up for it for half the year, did it just in time. I think it was, there was like a two hour limit. Oh, is that, um... oh, I know that bird called Chetty's, Chetty's Warbler, really? Definitely sounded like one. Anyway, um, yeah, so I trained open water swimming, 
started in the pool, didn't like the pool. And then I trained in the lake where the race was taking place. And I've just loved it ever since. I've done a couple of group swims a couple of summers ago afterwards. And then I found a lake not too far from home where they also conduct scuba diving courses. So it's a lake that's been there for years and years and they've got wrecks at the bottom of the lake for the scuba diving schools to take part in. And yeah, open water swimmers can swim there to their own heart's content. So I'm going back there tomorrow and I've also managed to hear, I've heard cuckoos there before and there's also been woodpeckers nearby so it's all very very natural based you're not like it's not like a lido or anything like that it's all surrounded by trees it's all natural water there's pike in it there's all sorts of fish so it's definitely wild there's nothing really man-made about it um so yeah i'm really looking forward to that and then maybe even once I've swum there, I can get my camera out as well. So yeah, like I said, the trees are still really bare. I can see the buds growing on them, but I can't, can't see it turning green in the very near future. And it looks like there's a whole flooded area where there's trees coming out from excess water but yeah when it was the summertime last year it was really green really thick vegetation the birds obviously loved it some teasels as well I'll be I'd be very happy if that was a Chetty's Warbler that I heard. <laughs> so, where I'm coming up to now, you could probably hear the water, but there's a... It's a wren. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lock up here. There's obviously water still pushing through it. So I might have to speak up a bit when I get close. But if I really want to, if I stuck to the other side of the river where I started, I could follow the river then southwards and then I sort of come back to the main road and then it leads on to a place called Barnwell Country Park which I haven't visited myself but there could be another place in mind to visit when, when it so allows. Near the water Sort of reminds me of the waterfalls on Mull. Which I'm very excited to be returning to in the summer this year. So you might even get a walk, talk and shoot from Mull. All being well. Just seen some ripples up ahead. Cormorants just landed. Oh, just saw a buzzard. Oh, he's landed in the tree behind a tree. 
but it looked like he went over the field really low, so I wonder if he found something. Yeah, can't see it at all. I'm gonna walk back so you can hear me better <laughs> over the water. That's better. I can hear myself think now. Um, yeah, so as I'm walking back, I don't know if I'm going to see much else. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this live walk talk. It has basically been a walk and talk because it hasn't. There's been a lot of nice sounds, but the subjects don't really want to come and show themselves. So, yeah, it's been been a nice walk and talk <laughs> but just thinking ahead I am definitely going to be going back to Frampton Marsh so maybe a couple of hours before I do my volunteering I'll be able to walk around with my camera again and I can record that if there's any other subjects within the fens that I might might consider talking about I'll certainly write them down but I'm just taking full advantage of being outside again it's it's very nice indeed and I hope that all of you are able to go out more I know a few photographer friends who are very much enjoying going back out um, to local patches that they couldn't get to before so yeah it's all it's all looking really nice at the minute and I think in the lead up to when I go back to Mull like I said there's a couple of places I want to visit again either for the day or or even an afternoon but I should really get better at planning um, the sort of subjects I actually want to photograph. Oh dear, Lydia. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you like still enjoy these types of mini talks. It's been quite nice to have it all live. Obviously there's bits I edit out, like either people walking by or if there's too much traffic noise at one time. But it's sort of nice to do it all all in one go and yeah again getting the soundscapes in describing what the surroundings look like the fact that the sun is out I think everyone else is feeling the benefit of the sun being out it might not last long but it came out so I'm very much grateful for that Another subject that I might consider talking about now that the weather feels right for it is uh, that of all the different types of reptiles that will be coming out in the warmer weather. So I remember a couple of summers ago I was able to take part in a reptile survey not too far from here where there was the chances of seeing slow worms adders, grass snakes, common lizards, sand lizards. Ooh. Don't know if that was a whistle or a bird. Yeah, I think it was a whistle. Um, so yeah, there's... You're more likely to see all sorts of reptiles now. Some might do that as another sitting subject in between going out and photographing. There are some footprints here. Oh, that's new. 
don't know if you heard it, but it was like a doo 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 There's a chip chaff. Blue tip. Yeah, just before I'm crossing the bridge, I'm going a little over into the village. But it looks like there, um, there's a lake being formed here. Well, there was one, but they're re-establishing it. But yeah, just going back to the reptiles, it's um, a subject I don't really go towards because I'm very much for the larger subjects, <laughs> as you all know. Um, so that'll be interesting to do. If I go back and if I'm allowed to take part in a survey, then I'll be able to photograph more of more of the UK's reptiles because they are often forgotten about. There's some ducks preening on the opposite side. Let's see if I can get some pictures without disturbing them too much. It was looking very nice in the sun. It's male and a female mallard, in case I didn't say. very nicely. And ducks have gone to sleep now so that's my cue to go. So yeah as a, a summary it is very nice to be out with my camera again and hopefully there'll be a lot more of them. Uh, future episodes at the moment it will consist of going back to Frampton Marsh sticking back to the Fenlands and I am going to probably do a sitting episode on UK reptiles and hopefully that will uh, lead on to going back to that location when it allows and photographing them again. So yeah it's all, uh, it's all quite exciting to think of future episode rather than <laughs> thinking on the spot. <gasps> oh, there's a toad. I'm not going to get it in time. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's going, <laughs> it's going the wrong way, but it's definitely a toad because it's walking. Let's see if I can get in front of it. I don't know if there'll be any more. Oh, look at you! Oh, wow! Wow, we. I don't know if there's any more. Oh well. It's a not a huge toad, it's probably about probably about half the width of my hand. But I might see. So obviously I don't want it to get looked at by dogs, but I might end it there. <laughs> um, yeah, 
thank you all again for joining me on this episode. And as always, I'll speak to you again very shortly. Goodbye for now. My podcast cover shows my own image created using Canva. The theme music is provided by Purple Planet Music. Check out their royalty-free music at purple-planet.com. Thank you.